Oh, hi. Um, oh, my name is Matsuki. I, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're here to watch me talk about stuff live. Hi. So welcome to How We Design Gunsmith 2.0 for Modern Warfare 2 Live Reaction. Also, by the way, I got a new headset. Astro theme, as you can see. Very cool. <laughs> Let's get into this. That guy in the background, he looks so cool. Like Kruger. Um, My name is Mary Evjukian and I'm a senior UX designer. Gunsmith itself has a whole new environment. Let's look at this. All right, so first up we have the Cinder M4 here, which is one of the pre-order bonuses you get for pre-ordering Modern Warfare 2. It's a weapon vault. It uh, The weapon vaults are basically unlocking you every single attachment for that gun right off the bat. So unlike MW19, where if you buy a weapon blueprint from the store, you only get like the five or less attachments that come with it. And those are the only themed attachments for what you bought. In this case, weapon vaults, this one, black and red, every single attachment's black and red. That's kind of what you're getting yourself into. It's pretty cool. Now people might think, mm, maybe that's a little bit OP. Maybe you're doing a little bit of a pay to win advantage from, I guess, launch to maybe like the first week when <laughs> everyone else has already leveled up the gun. Cause dude, the guns are not gonna take that long to level up. And buying a weapon vault like this, you're only getting an advantage for like a week, right? It's basically the same as getting Modern Warfare 2 at Christmas, you know, Christmas noobs. They're gonna be put into lobbies where they're battling people who've already played the game for two months, leveled up weapons for two months, and they've gained two months of map knowledge. So this is on a much, much smaller scale. And then we got the X-12, which I believe is in Modern Warfare 2019. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> Ooh, a shock stick. What the heck is that? In my opinion, it's probably going to be like the shock mine from Black Ops 3. It kind of stuns you if you walk by it. And then we got a thermite, which we know what that is. And then we got some interesting stuff with the perks. And if you guys haven't seen my uh, pro perks video I uploaded the other day, give it a watch. It was pretty good. Um, <laughs> I liked it a lot. It was fun to make and I got a lot of positive responses. And drop a like, dude. Don't, don't forget to drop a like. <laughs> but look at this. We got perk package hunter. So this also might be one of the outcomes of what I discussed in that video yesterday or two days ago. There was a search and destroy icon at the top that branched down into like two other perks. This could essentially be what that was, except maybe on a little bit of a different scale. You got Hunter, a perk package. So either the little buff arm at the left side is like a wild card from Black Ops Cold War, or there's gonna be multiple packages that come with their own preset perks. So perhaps they won't allow Ghost and Ninja to be in the same perk package. That could be a possibility. I'd be interested in that. But then again, it might be a little bit more limiting. We'll just have to find out. That sucks. I was really hoping it would be some form of tactical pieces of equipment. But oh well, oh well. Let's continue. Environment. It is an updated interface that makes it feel like you are in a gunsmithing space. My name is Ben oh, Garnell, yeah. principal artist. What they're going to see first of hello. all is the M4. All right, what do we have here? Weapon build, build, build weapon. <laughs> we got customize and progression. Now look at all these attachments. They got a muzzle, barrel, laser, optic, uh, under barrel, ammunition, magazine, rear grip, stock, and the new thing, the receiver. And now that is actually really cool. I will let you guys see what they have to say about that first. And what you're going to notice is not only in this title are you able to change out the stock, optic, etc., but this time there's actually an extra slot, and that mm -hmm. is for the receiver. Receiver, you have let's go! A platform of weapons, which is a family of weapons. Once you get to a receiver unlock within your first weapon, that's when you unlock another weapon. See all that? Oh, I guess. And those kind of modifications it, but... that you have well, already unlocked back. for the previous weapon now work on that weapon too. The receiver this time is driving Gunsmith as it would be in reality, and each of these separate receivers have their own unique progression. See that? So, earlier on, we saw that this is uh, this is an M4, as, as you can see on the left side there. But now, Within your one of these weapon, receivers that that's they unlock here, M16. Weapon. Right and there. those modifications that you have already unlocked for the previous. So look at that. We got M4, M16, 
556 uh, Icarus, the f Tac Recon, and then the FSS uh, Hurricane, which are all variants of the M4. It's kind of like the Odin and that one called the Ghost Sniper that you can like create with it. Or it's kind of like the AK-47 in Modern Warfare, and how you can transform into an AK-74U with all the SMG conversions, even though it's an assault rifle. It's like that. So I'm... This... It looks like they expanded upon it. Look at that, we already have five variants of the M4. That's so cool. And something else really cool about this is like, um, you could have like a burst perk on your M4 in, in, in uh, Modern Warfare 2019, but it was kind of gimmicky. It wasn't its own weapon. Per se. This right here though, it looks like it transforms into its own weapon. So that's really cool. Uh, it might have been. <laughs> now work on that weapon too. The receiver this time is driving Gunsmith as it would be in reality. And each of these separate receivers have their own unique progression. So the receiver for the- See, look at that. Um, yeah, it looks like the base stats are gonna change in, in the left side there depending on assault which receiver you use. Will remain for that assault rifle. At the top there, it says tuned for mid to long range engagements. The M16 features a three round burst rifle that has increased range and stability. So the receiver- Then the 556 Icarus, Isaris, is a lightweight squad sport weapon in the M4 platform. Increased ammo capacity does not significantly impact mobility. For the assault rifle. The FTAC, we got a high powered 458 battle rifle that delivers severe damage at medium range. The FSS Hurricane sacrifices range and stopping power for increased ammo capacity and enhanced stability. Assault rifle, but if it's a receiver for the SMG within that platform and you switch to that receiver, then you have the SMG in place. But the modifications that you have already previously done on that assault rifle can move over to that SMG. So basically what they're saying here is like, you unlock this SZ reflex on one of the receivers it's going to unlock the same optic on the next receiver and the next receiver. If I get a red dot sight on my M4, I'm going to have that red dot sight on my M16. Like that. It's really cool and it makes weapon uh, progressing a lot faster, which in my opinion has been a real problem in especially Call of Duty Vanguard, where attachments affect your weapons so much and it feels like such a hassle to go to a new weapon starting from scratch, zero attachments. It feels so underpowered compared to everything else in the game. And you don't want to do that halfway through its life cycle. It, it's not something you want to do in Vanguard. You want to just stick with one weapon. Stick with the automation. It, it's the best one, baby. <laughs> but yeah, let's continue. Each of those shared attachments that you unlock is now cross-progressible and attachable onto another weapon in the same Hell class. yeah! This takes away from the this grind so cool. of having to this. unlock every single yep. attachment on each weapon every time they want to level up This is my first weapon. time watching it, by the way. What this I'm does sorry, is it shows you that one it. group that you unlocked <laughs> on the first weapon is now usable on a different weapon within that platform, and you don't need to re-unlock that weapon. Ooh. I'm Joel Emsley. I'm the hey. director at Infinity Ward. We I'm are glad still introducing... Here. Hey man, our system up? of how to develop or modify a blueprint like we've never done before. Here, Infinity let's rewatch that. We are introducing our system of how to develop or modify a blueprint like we've never done before. Look at that we mag. wanted to create <laughs> a weapon system that was visually consistent through and through. What the FTX Cinder Vault allows us to do is to take a platform like the M4, which Love has vaults. tons of attachments and yep. Every single one of those attachments box mag. themed cohesively will have that unique look, the unique red anodizing of FJX Cinder. Thank My you. My Yi Yang, and I'm a product manager here at Yi Yang. When we set out nice to name. create the vault system, we wanted to give players greater ability to customize and add personality to their weapons. At its core, the vault system unlocks every attachment and allows you to equip any attachment onto your M4 platform that share the same aesthetic. It's a fantastic yeah. what type was that? of platform. The light silencer. Oh, it's part of the receiver. Okay. Interesting. So is it kind of like a weapon mod from Black Ops 4 slightly? Maybe some receivers uh, change the weapon kind of like a M4 to M16 and some just like 
or like that, like the light silencer, it's just an extra feature for your weapon as if you're running uh, an extra attachment perhaps. Um, let's just see, is there any location? Yeah, there is, okay, we got five attachments in the bottom left, three out of five. Hi, Sega. So I guess one of those uh, would count? No, 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 no. He already has three selected and the receiver is just an extra. So it's kind of like pick, pick six and the receiver is the sixth th attachment. That share the same aesthetic. It's a fantastic it. type of weapon and blueprint system to introduce into the game because people like me can sit there and geek out on it. I consider it to be the ultimate blueprint. It's every single attachment for my personal favorite platform in the game. I can't wait to and geek out on this. You are able to run it however you like, and it's going to match no matter Thank what you. attachment suite you put on it. The goal was to produce something that players could play with and not break the visual. And Gunsmith Thank overall you. just feels like a whole new experience. This is the game I've been waiting to make a long time. <laughs> now get early access this is a game I've been waiting data. to play for a long time. Thank you, Joel Ensley. All right, so this is really cool. Um, you know what? I do have a few suggestions that I'd like to make. Uh, I guess I can take these off. Um, something else that I love to see in this sort of game is sort of a new feature for your weapons. Uh, kind of to immerse you a little bit more, just like they're doing right now. But that one would be, the one I'm talking about would be kind of like a new favorite system. And I've described this in other places on other social medias, um, YouTube as well. But this is the first time I've made it into a video on my channel, so here's what it is. Basically, you go to your weapon, right? You go to your weapon customization at the top there, and where your camos are. If you find an arctic camo and you want to use it on snow maps, you can favorite it and manually select arctic. So every time you get an arctic map, you will have that camo automatically equipped to your gun. And then if that's the only thing you have favorited, right? If you get like an urban map or something like a museum, which we've already kind of seen, it's kind of like futuristic and very clean, kind of like a just an urban area, right? That Arctic camo will unequipped, and you'll just have the default weapon with the default uh, sort of aesthetic that they've already made for the weapon. So for the Cinder variant, for example, it'd just be black and red. But then again, if we went to a snow map, you get that Arctic camo on top of your Cinder weapon uh, weapon variant as like a new skin, and this just uh, creates a lot better flow i guess a better ecosystem i don't like being forced to change my weapons camo every time i swap maps same with uh operators i think it would be a really good opportunity to implement this feature for operators too because you can only more run like one operator on a team at a time right but if i had this favorite system what we could do is have multiple favorites for even the same skin so let's say i'm at uh, this uh kruger guy what's his name Okay, apparently uh, Green Patriot told me it's uh, Kilgore. So, Kilgore here. Let's say we have uh, this green variant and we want to use it for forests. And then let's say there's this, like a white variant we want to use for any... And then we could go to a different operator, like I think uh, Reigns, he's in the game, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we could do one of his skins for desert themed maps and it just flow like that. I, I would really love to see a system like this, Infinity Ward. And and if you like this system too, please just go to Twitter and tweet at Infinity Ward this uh, idea and hopefully they'll see it. As a community, this would be a great feature to come together for. And also, another thing I noticed, which I'm not too happy with right here. Uh, let's zoom in right here, right here. Look at this. So we got our loadouts. But then, bam, 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 we got killstreaks. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hey, this is Metsuki from the future, just saying there is now a toggle 100% confirmed between killstreaks and score streaks. So, thank you, Infinity Ward, for that great feature. I love me some score streaks by default. <laughs> uh, if you guys have played MW19, killstreaks are not the way to go. We do not want kill streaks in Call of Duty. We want score streaks and not Black Ops Cold War's weird variant of score streaks. We want classic score streaks, especially uh, from like Infinite Warfare and Black Ops 3. Those are the kind of score streaks we want, okay? They're score streaks that have a certain amount of points to uh, acquire. 
you don't have to choose score streaks between other score streaks. I don't have to select a UAV or a counter UAV. I can have both of them because they are score streaks. They are different amounts of score. With this system, you can't have four kills for a UAV and four for a counter UAV. It just doesn't work like that. So if we go to score streaks, it works better that way. And also score streaks just uh, encourage movement and objective play. By going for an objective, you're going to gain more score, which is going to help the map flow more and help you get your streaks. That's what encouraging objective play is. And it encourages movement, <laughs> which is something people really need to do. Or at least the vocal college community needs to have so that they don't have to fall back on Modern Camp Fear 2. The annoying fucks they are, I know. Um, but... I think this is also just something necessary to help the general ecosystem of the game. Not just to get back at them, okay? <laughs> but yes, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we also got vehicles, of course, here. Vehicle customization, not much to say about that. Uh, we could analyze this a little more. Uh, I'll see you in a sec if I can find anything else. Looks like the beta is going to be maybe three days long. I don't know. It says two days and eight hours at the very top for some odd reason. <laughs> the beta's not live yet. <laughs> Change out the stock. Oh, oh damn, that's a little disappointing. So it does not look like we have detailed stats as of now in this build. As you can see, it says pros and cons on the left. Sprint uh, speed and aim walk speed, crouch movement speed. Ooh, aim walk speed, that's a good one. I like to see that. I complain about this a lot in MW19. I just want faster ADS walk speed. But it uh, looks like attachments are going to be doing that for us this time. I am pretty happy to see that, but... Again, no detailed stats, so you don't get exact numbers when you select different attachments. Ah, uh, darn. I like to see that there's rounds in reserve ammo, though. That's actually a really cool feature. Ooh, that's a cool little feature. Look at that. Under the uh, name of the weapon, you got Manufacturer Tempest Armament. So I guess we're going to go back to that little system too, huh? I know uh, MW19 kind of had like XR on the magazines or something like that. So it kind of showed that there was some sort of manufacturer, but Infinite Warfare also had a bunch of different manufacturers for the for the rigs and I think the guns as well. Uh, it was a really nice little extra detail. I like to see that here too. And look at that, there's only 16 uh, levels for each of these weapons. That's nice to see too, I like that. Oh! So you can transform it from an AR to an SMG. This is the same weapon right here and here. See now it says S SMG at the very top left? But like, uh, assault rifle, uh, right here. Right here it says assault rifle in the top left, uh, even though it's the same gun. That's actually really neat too. I wonder how camos are going to work. Maybe you have to do a specific, uh, what do you call it, receivers for specific camos this year. That would be kind of neat. Then again, maybe uh, switching to different receivers to get the regular camos would also be helpful, like close range kills with a M4. Maybe you want to switch it to a, the SMG version of it, and that's how it works. That'd be neat. But then again, I, I do hope that if the camo progression is also across all these receivers as well, like you share like the same camos, I hope that there is a lot more camos, because this is like five weapons in one receiver, or one family tree of weapons so maybe do five times the amount of camos <laughs> and i really hope the mastery camo is going to be worth it this year it better be worth it please don't make it look ugly don't make it look silly make it look badass and make it stand out okay okay thank you okay this assault rifle has 19 attachments interesting at least yeah or at least uh, 19 levels yeah, 19 levels of attachments. Okay, cool. Damn, this system looks so cool. I can't wait to customize my weapons. I, I hope there's there's like uh, custom paint jobs too, or at least uh, custom sticker locations. So that you can have certain designs in the specific places you want. If I buy an anime bundle, for example, I don't want it to be on the stock of the weapon, like the character. So I want to be able to move the character somewhere to like where it says Tempest Armament, like right in the middle of the gun, right above the magazine, or maybe on the barrel, one of those two areas. Like, I just want to be able to custom, customize it a little bit more that way too. 
So my purchase is a little bit more uh, worth it. <laughs> that was visually consistent Just through and cycles. through. <laughs> it's so well, cool, I love it. Allows it. The goal was to produce something that players could play with and not break the visual. And Gunsmith. Let's hope the whole game is like that. And by that note, I'm gonna say peace out, homies. It has been a lovely little live video for you guys. Um, I don't know, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of this style, let me know in the comments, because, I mean, I'd be down for update videos kind of like this whenever they release a new patch or something, or Intel drop, I should say. <laughs> they are a lot faster to make these types of videos, but I'll still definitely do my little analyses and in-depth videos how I normally make them. So don't worry about that. Those aren't going away anytime soon. And I got a little surprise for you in the upcoming weeks too with my friend Zalandi. So and I hope you enjoy that too. So yeah, peace out, homies.